Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. And yes, this is a neutral look. Don't worry. It's not the invasion of the pod people. I am still that mad bird you've all known and love. But I wore this palette in one of my declutter films. And I showed this palette in one of my declutter films. And since then have had an awful lot of people asking me to do a tutorial with it. So your wish is my command and all that. But I had to throw a bright red lip on because, well, darling, we can't do everything neutral, can we? You can, of course, team it with a neutral look for work. But if you want to find out exactly how well or otherwise this palette performs and what I think of a neutral palette, then, my darlings, you are in precisely the right place. As I have said for some time, and here come the sassy britches, have heard F oft echoed on other channels. Grab a drink. And I managed to find cherry coke full of sugar. Yes! Grab a snack your feet up and enjoy because here it comes hey lovelies welcome back from the intro okay I will have shown you this in the intro it's it's not what you normally expect from me it's not pow 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 pow, pow in terms of colour this is the 24K Gold Rush from W7. Uh, you can see on the back. Okay. Oh, it's got three different types of ingredients depending on the type of pigment. Fair dues. Okay. Shows you all that on the back there. But. Let's take that brush out before it falls out. You can see from this, it's it's the Anastasia Beverly Hills layout, but colour-wise, Natasha Denona's gold palette, which bizarrely I've actually found calling to me. And I don't really know why, because it's not, you know, it, it, it's, it's all shades of browns and golds and bronzes and uh, one very bright white shade and then a matte and shimmer deep teal. So, very much the opposite of what I normally pick up. Um, but this one just... The Natasha Denona palette has been calling me for quite a while. And I was doing an order and needed to make it up to a certain amount to get free shipping. So I thought, right, do you know what, I'll get that, I'll see what it's like. I mean, I'm never going to be able to afford a Natasha Denona. I, I got one of the little 25 buck palettes which ended up costing me 25 bucks again, or 25 quid, when it arrived on import fees, and I'm just like, well, that was bloody well worth it. But seriously, I ended up paying nearly, I think it was about like 47, 48 quid in total for something the size of a USB stick, which, oh, never again. Um, and I have got a dupe of the Safari palette, from the uh, the C colour cosmetics, but um, I wore this in I 
think it was one of my declutters and I said that I hadn't filmed it but if people were interested in seeing it let me know and then likewise obviously I showed this in my palette declutter clearly I didn't declutter it um, and I've had quite a few people message me saying they would love to see what it's like so kind of your wish is my command almost now as always this is a teaching channel and by virtue of that and by virtue of my extreme pain I don't blend as quickly as a lot of people do so if you find that I am blending at a speed that is too slow for you or I am talking at a speed that is too slow for you one Please remember, this channel is linked as ASMR. I don't sit here and do all of this stuff, although I do sometimes drum my nails on things just because I like drumming my nails on things. Um, but it's more that I have a very soothing voice, so I am told. And, uh, yes. But, if you want to speed me up for whatever reason, YouTube has provided you with a speed widget feel free to use it I'm going to be using two of my Royal and Lenlickle Chic Pro brushes today the crease brush which is a, a loose fluffy brush and their eyeshadow brush which is again loose but it's pinched from the side so it gives me a more controlled angle now uh, from very early days I've been discussing the difference, because I am a teaching channel, I've been discussing the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because they are different even though they suffer very similar issues when it comes to longevity and wearability of eyeshadows. Um, and I've noticed even bigger beauty gurus are getting it wrong, basically. Um, so I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment. For those of you who are new to my channel, I when I zoom in, I don't zoom in like most beauty gurus do, uh, sort of like make sure you can still see the collotage. No, I zoom in so you just see my eyes. Because if you, like me, watch on your phone screen, you want to be able to see what the hell's going on. Um, so I will talk you through in this little clip how to work out which type of eye you have, and also the workaround for each eye type, which is different. Because I hear a lot of even the bigger beauty gurus saying, oh, I've got hooded lids, and I look at them and think, no, no, you have deep set eyes. So, so that you can work out which you have, here's a clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over mm -hmm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got 
deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, and I am back. Right, okay. So I'm going to go into uh, this palette starting off with the crease brush which is a big old round fluffy brush and I'm going to go into I think Mega first which is a pretty much the same colour as the top of this brush to be quite honest so holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible no I haven't been to a nail salon these are stick-ons Hmm. Starting from here, little circular movements, and we start off going in this direction towards the nose. Then, when we reach the nose, we do a bit of a bounce and reverse the direction to come back out. Now, the reason we do this is because yesterday, 1st of May, Beltane. I was 46. It, it's one of my weirdest birthdays. It, it kind of rates up there with my 43rd birthday when I was in bed trying not to die from pneumonia. Literally. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting day. Hubby did a fry up for brunch. We had a much later start than the usual our four alarm, which is quite nice for a change. Because obviously back at the beginning of the year, he'd booked some time off. He'd booked my birthday and the day after it off. So we could go out and do things and go and see a film and go out for a meal and maybe drive to the coast and say, so, yeah, none of that happened. Um, and I fancied Chinese food for the evening. 
and I don't know whether it was a Chinese holiday or something on the 1st of May but uh, there was only one Chinese restaurant open that was delivering at the time on Friday night for goodness sake and because I know a lot of Chinese is a shot on a Tuesday at least in, in my town but um, there was only one Chinese that was open and unfortunately it's one that when we'd had Chinese from it before it was swimming in Greece so change of plan, I had fish and chips which being Friday I suppose it's appropriate you meant to eat fish on a Friday aren't you? Anyway, this is blending out really nicely but then uh, W7, I like W7's palettes, particularly the ones that are their Anastasia shaped palettes. They usually keep this sort of shape for duping Anastasias. Um, and I do like the, the formula that they use on these particular palettes. They're very, very soft and nice to blend, but they build up really quite nicely but then I would expect them to be able to do that well because browns are the easiest colour to create so that's quite nice I'm going to go for a deeper brown now should I go for the brown or should I go for the I'm actually going to go for the teal, the filthy rich shade. And I'm just going to pick that up on the brush and apply this in exactly the same way, just further down the eye. Um, if people are wondering about these nails, because I know I've had a lot of questions about them, um, if you go onto my Instagram, I've actually tagged the lady that created these. Um, she actually has a, a salon, which obviously at the moment is shut, which is about a 45 minute drive from where I live ish, 45 minute to an hour, depending on traffic. Um, I'd not used her before, but one of the beauty groups that I'm in, um, she put up these Tiger King nails with Carol Furkin Baskin and Joe and Carol did it. Um, um, it's upside down and it Joe exotic. Um, <laughs> love these, I really do. And they were only 25 quid for the set and I thought, do you know what, I'll grab them. And she did them on the short stilettos for me, which is great. I can still do things without poking myself in the eye too much. You can see this has actually blended really nicely. And being a bluey green, these are not easy shadows to create. I'm just blending that. I might. I'm just going to clean the brush off a minute. And I'm going to dip back into Mega, which is the brown that I used, just to blend that edge there a little bit, just so I don't lose that lovely brown while I'm blending the teal. Yeah, so I ordered these and they arrived. Well, she actually completed them a lot quicker than I was expecting. I thought, oh, I'll probably take her about, you know, 10, 15 days to get it done. And that, they were done in less than a week. So that was awesome. And, uh, I was telling you why I was doing circles on my eyes, wasn't I? It's basically because the skin on my eyelids moves. I'm 46, I've lost 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. And by doing circles, you're gently moving the skin around so you don't get tiger striping. <laughs> tiger striping. 
anyway so these arrived and she sent them with the glue pads the little sticky pad things the clear jelly ones not the the white pads that I've used in the past um, so I thought oh, I'll give those a go so I stuck all the gel pads on and gave them a good sort of good push for like 10 seconds and then started sorting out which nails would fit which finger sort of thing so they had a good 30 seconds of almost like natural curing time on my nail before I put anything on it and then I got my brush on glue and I brushed the underside of the nail where it would adhere to my natural nail and because the pad obviously was in the middle of the nail I just brushed a little bit of glue just around the edges of the pad the gel pad so that it would stick down at the cuticle because obviously I didn't want to get liquid underneath it because then you're running the risk of getting greenies which you can get with, with acrylic nails if you get moisture underneath them and touch wood these have been on for eight days and I've not had a single one ping off yet and I'm not gentle with my nails and I've coped with showering and hair washing and hand washing and you know all the usual bits and bobs you get up to in your daily life oh, I do like this I thought this when I used the palette first time when I was um, just, I thought I'll just bung something on quick to film with because I knew I was losing light and I thought then how nicely this went so I'm really glad that I had people ask for this one even though it's I've got a lot of palettes here that I really need to film with because I've had them here quite a while now but I've had a lot of I've been concentrating on my Zodiac series getting that started and established and Obviously I have my monthly collab, three continents, one palette. I've just dipped back into that mega again just to buff this edge. Um, I've had a few collabs coming up, so... And I've, I've been struggling incentive-wise to... to actually film. Um, I know that sounds daft, but... It's just where my, my depression hits, I guess. One of those things, one of those things we have to deal with, eh? I've got a lot of good feedback on my, um, my film where I did my version of the power of makeup. Where this is how I look, this is how I feel in terms of chronic pain and stuff. And I've got so much feedback from that. I, it just, it astounded me the number of people that have said to me, they've shown that film to their family and said look this is what I'm going to this is what you don't see um, so I had a lot of people actually write to me and say thank you you've you've put into makeup what we couldn't put into words which I thought was lovely um, I'm going to use my eyeshadow brush now it's still a chic pro from one and Nicole, but it's a little bit more pinched I want to keep this more in the crease this time. So I'm going to dip into Wealthy, which is the deepest brown in the palette. And I'm just going to pop this just sort of going about halfway across with circular movements. And then just dragging what's left on the brush across in a very light windscreen wiper move. But I'm only really blowing out this edge because I don't want to detract from that gorgeous teal. 
I'm going to pop some of this on the outer corner here. Pretty. I'm tempted actually to do a, a halo eye again today. I've done a couple of those recently and they've been going down quite nicely. So I go through phases. So I'll pop a little bit of this on the inner corner as well. And just but you can see by slowly building the colour up like this, you're really building up definition on the eye. Now obviously I'm I'm putting this deepest shade in what for me is my natural crease. If you've had to move your crease, as in the instructions with deep set and hooded lids, then follow whichever crease line you had determined. Yeah, I just, it's quite funny. My mother-in-law's very, where she's a, a nurse, or oh, ex-nurse, she's retired now, she works for a charity that does sort of nursing in the home kind of thing, um, she does like foot care stuff. Because of my super deep creasing here, where this eye got pulled around, you can see even with the circular movements it's left me with a tiger stripe, I do actually have to stretch just the inner part of this lid out, otherwise I end up with loose pigment rather than blended and it ends up falling into my eye and becomes very painful but you can see I'm only stretching out the part of the lid that has the very deep creasing I'm only taking it as far as I need to, I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll and as soon as I'm done I'm letting go but, um, yeah, my mother-in-law is very strict about following rules and stuff. Bless her, she broke lockdown. She said, I couldn't not let you have your birthday card. <laughs> so she um, she pulled up outside and sent the brother-in-law down and he's there like arm's length and I'm sort of arm's length to take the thing, which is really sweet. So, mother-in-law broke lockdown rules. Makes a change. One of my neighbours that hasn't adhered to the lockdown rules once. Girlfriend pops over every couple of days or so and then goes back again. And... But let's not go there, eh? I've got my sassy brooches on again. Right, I'm going to use this pencil brush. It's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to go into Dirty Cash. Dirty cash, I want you. Dirty cash, I need you. All. Money talks. Money talks. Well, I'm showing my age now. Right, now I've put the pigment on. I'm going to give it a spritz. This is the I Heart Revolution in coconut. You can use any spray. You can use. Come on. God, what is that? This does not. in the bin then. And I will grab my caffeine spray instead. Let's see if that will work. Yay! But I just haven't got patience with anything at the moment. Right, I'm just going to dry this ferrule off by sort of resting it in my knuckle and spinning. Um, you can use any liquid as I was about to say when my spray decided not to work. I'm just going to apply this on these sort of outer edges of the gap that I'd left on my lid. I'm 
like so. And the question is, will there be enough on here to do this lid as well? Right, so dry the, the brush off and go back in again. Yeah, you can use any liquid. You can use setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray, moisturising spray like Mac Fix Plus. Um, you can even just use water. But just don't ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you'll kill the pigment. Same thing with this eye. Just pop that at the two outer edges. Doing a halo eye is a very impactful look because it, it kind of lines up with, oh, I haven't done it too well on that eye, lines up with your pupil. So it really draws attention to the colour of your eyes. And then I'm going to go into... Oh, I'm torn between two different shades. This one's loaded. This one's Golden Boy. I think I'll go into Golden Boy. Wow, this is a super, super soft. Um, it's, it's almost like a super shock shadow, so be very, very careful when you're using this one, if you've got this palette. That really is soft. And then this goes in the remaining bit. The tip with doing a halo eye is always to have the lightest shade in the middle to draw attention to your eye. You can sort of blend the edges I might leave them quite sharp and editorial today because I quite like that look. Right my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and bits and bobs on and I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Uh, I'm going to have to wait for a little bit until I next press record to talk to you but for you my darlings it's going to be instant, so I'll see you right now. Hey, I'm back. Uh, you may have noticed I've done a wing because it's half eleven at night, so there's no pollen. <laughs> Yay! Um, now, regular viewers will know I love the Renaissance Flick. This is the black liquid liner. They brought out two new colours. Now, I've tried the blue one. But it bled quite a bit. And I don't know if that's because I was having very watery eyes, so I need to try this one again. But they also have this gorgeous chocolate brown, which is the shade that I've used today. I have got a mini tutorial on how to apply winged liner. Um, there's a whole mini tutorial playlist, so rather than drag this film out, I thought I would just direct you to that because. Those of you who already know how to put liner on will be like, oh, why are you teaching your grandma to suck eggs? Okay, going in with a flat topped brush. And I'm going to go into a Wealthy, which is that deep, deep chocolate brown, the deepest shade in the palette. And I'm just going to run that tight along the lower lash line. Easy on this side because I have peripheral vision, less so on this side because I don't and the viewfinder is a long way away when you haven't got your contact lens in or your glasses on. 
Maybe the viewers will attest to how many times they've seen me poke myself in the blooming eye. Don't worry, there's still time. Right now, regular viewers also know this next brush. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped, but it's chunky, which I love. Um, but you can use any kind of, um, you know, densely packed brush or smudger brush. You could use something like the MAC M321. Um, or something like this, the larger, if I show you it next to a pencil brush. Hello, there we go. This larger one, which comes up to a point that you can then go sideways with. But I just like this one. And I'm going to go into High Life, which is a bit of a deeper brown than I used up here, and a more neutral brown. Uh, that was quite a warm brown that I used up there. And I'm just going to use this to buff out the lower lash line. In terms of my brows today, I just soap browed it and then used the uh, Dark Brown Revolution micro pencil just for a change lush tidy right I am going to grab I have not used this enough. This is the Cruella. You idiots, you fools, you imbeciles. Uh, and it looks like that. And it's lovely. And this is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay. Probably ten or more years ago now. But it's great for getting up under the tail of your brow. If you've had to take your colour right up to your brow, you can still do this and just put a slightly lighter patch just over the top of the shadow that you've put on. It just helps to lighten and lift the brows and give them a more youthful look. Because apparently, along with everything else, our brows droop as we get older. Isn't that just fabulous? So in a corner and as always I like to bring mine underneath and just blend it in with the colour under my eye and this is a much more neutral look than most people will have seen me in but I like to switch it up every now and again and like I said I did have requests for this palette Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some mascara on, uh, do some lippy, chuck some more Cruella on the high points of my cheeks, do something with my hair, and I'll be right back with the finished look. Don't go anywhere now. I am back. I have to say, this look is... Very reminiscent of looks that I did through the uh, uh, late 80s and 90s. Uh, dark, smoky, smoky, browny, bronzy eyes with bright red lips. Uh, this was this was very much me. Um, <laughs> obviously, I have Cruella across the top of my cheeks. Mascara is the Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Lashes little miniature that my friend Hedda sent me. Lippy is my little mini bite lipstick that I bought in Cayenne. Love this shade. It's a proper 1950s style blue based red. Makes your teeth look 
beautifully white. I love it. So, what do I think of this? Just checking I don't have lipstick on my teeth or my chin. Because I have a very full bottom lip and I tend to get just a line on my chin there. Um, surprisingly, I really like it. Blends amazingly. has a lot more choice in it than I anticipated. When I first looked at it and I'm like, ugh, brown, 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 gold, purple, not purple, purple, teal, and white, and browns, and gold. But then when I started using it and I realised actually this really is a nice, this could take you from day to night. This is the kind of palette you could pop in your handbag you could use the light browns through the day as like a one and done and then you can deepen it up chuck a shimmer on change your lippy maybe stick a couple of pair of false lashes on and girl you are out the door um so yeah i actually surprisingly enough mad bird who loves color likes this neutral palette Uh, have, have you picked yourself up off the floor yet? <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to shock you quite that much. Talking of shocks, uh, if you're one of my regulars, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but sneakily they are leaving me in your playlist so you do not realise you have been unsubscribed. Uh, once you've done that, it'd be awesome if you could just give us a thumbs up on this or a thumbs down if you didn't like it um, it really does help with the algorithm and pushing the film out to other people so they can come join the fun um, yeah who wouldn't want to join this fun huh and let me know in the comments section what you think of this palette have you been tempted to buy it now you've seen me use it there's the question if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, normally things are much more colourful uh, on this channel. However, I'm guessing if you've made it this far, you must have liked something about what you've seen. So in that case, it would be awesome if you would just hit that subscribe button. You can't miss it. It's the same colour as my lips. I can't speak right now. But it's the same colour as my lips. Bright red. And turn it to grey. And then say yes, however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes. And to choose all notifications and then maybe you'll get, I don't know, one in every four films they'll tell you about. Speaking of which, I have got an awful lot of other films you can watch. Pick a playlist. And as I have said for some time now, and oft hear echoed on other, shall we say, less imaginative channels. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.